Many A-level physics students are revising the wrong way and it is costing them grades. In this video I'm going to break down two years worth of A-level physics month by month. Starting off with September of year 12, welcome to A-level physics. This is a crucial time to get your head around the subject and also master the fundamentals. You need to ensure that you're really good at dealing with vectors first of all. Vectors are ways of representing forces and most most of physics is based around them. You should gradually get comfortable with things such as breaking down vectors into their horizontal and vertical components. Also resolving forces on a slope. You'll be using this knowledge throughout your two years worth of A-level physics in the future. Additionally, you will also likely start learning about uncertainties. A-level physics is also an experimental subject, meaning that you will gradually be incorporating how sure you can be of experimental results. These are also guaranteed to be tested in exams. Luckily in A-level physics we follow a set of simple rules that we apply to combining uncertainties. These are just behind me on the screen right now. Depending on the order that your school is teaching you will also likely start covering some of the mechanics. One foundation of physics is linear motion. Things such as the Suvat equation that you can see behind me right now are so fundamental and you're going to find them in almost every every aspect of physics in year 13 as well. This is the time to solve so many problems that they start feeling a second nature. You will gradually be able to solve problems such as this one without even thinking about it and just writing the correct equation. At some point during this time period you will also have your very first assessment in A-level physics. My advice is not to underestimate it. And the best way to prepare for assessments would be just to go to physics and maths tutor and solve every available past paper question on the topic that you looking for. If you're not happy with the grade of the first assessment, do not let that grade define you. You can double down on your work. You can also watch one of my summary videos that cover the entire specification that I'm going to link in the description. If also at any point throughout your journey you need a physics tutor, I also do physics tutoring and a range of courses that I'm going to leave as well in the description of this video. Next time period which is year 12 January to March. I think this is the correct time to start looking at problems which are way beyond the scope of the A-level syllabus. What we want to do is start building some problem-solving skills and I think the best way to do that in year 12 would be to start having a look at some of the senior physics challenge problems. A lot of them will involve concepts such as mechanics and waves and they're really good fun. They will expose you to different ways of tackling problems and also to some beautiful physics. The competition is for year 12 students and your school will likely offer it. If not, you can ask them about it, but it's usually taken around March time. Additionally, if you're planning on applying to Oxbridge or Imperial or UCL, you also might want to start thinking about the entrance exams. These will have a syllabus that you will need to cover and the earlier you start, generally the better. By this point in year 12, you would have covered a lot of the fundamentals, so a lot of the entrance exam problems will be accessible to you and by starting them early you will be at an advantage. On the A-level side this will be an excellent time to focus on your exam technique. For instance there are some very specific command words in A-level physics. Things such as describe and explain, discuss, state will require you to have very different answers and different approaches to problems. Practice those with mark schemes so that you can see exactly what an examiner wants but also remember that you not just memorizing mark scheme and in all of those questions the answers are always rooted in really good understanding of physics. Ask yourselves why will something happen and the answer for that is always found in the laws of physics. I think this is also the correct time to start potentially a revision schedule. Your school will have some sort of a progression exam or end of year, year 12 exam. Some of them can be as early as year 12. A very often mistake that I see is just not revising for this exam or starting the, your revision very, very late. See what topics are going to be covered on the exam. It's very likely that it will be everything that you've learned in year 12 and then you can start tackling it. One good strategy might be to check out one of my revision videos 
videos. And then straight after that, follow this up by solving a question pack from physics and maths tutor. There's lots of these. This will give you not only the theory preparation, but also a lot of practice for some specific problems. Straight after your progression exams, I think it's time to focus on a little bit harder physics, especially if you're thinking about studying physics or engineering in the future. Just think how much of a better physicist you would be if you were to have solved, let's say, all of the Pat entrance exam problems if you're applying to Oxford, or even if you're not, because they really are amazing problems. Or the British Physics Olympiad, 10 years worth of papers during the summer holidays. Not only will you have revised some crucial aspects of physics, but you will have been exposed to so much harder problems that A-level physics will just feel easier. Now, during that summer term, if you are looking on taking the PAT entrance exam or the ESAT, you will also likely have to learn a few topics uh, independently, things such as electromagnetism, for instance. And if that's the case, you can check out some of my videos onto this. There might be a little bit of an overkill. So the summer is an excellent opportunity to both learn this independently and develop your problem solving skills. If you need more of a structured help on this, I'll be more than happy to help out with my physics tutoring that I've also linked in the description. Additionally, don't forget your mental health and rest in the summer, particularly going outside, going on things such as walks and adventures and spending time with family and friends. A-level can be a very stressful time and you deserve that rest. And then suddenly the summer is over and you're starting year 13. Welcome back to A-level physics. Year 13 can be both exciting but also daunting. Now all of a sudden you don't just have physics to learn but you might also be working on things such as your personal statement or you might be preparing for some entrance exams meanwhile while trying to study some really complicated topics such as motion oscillation gravitation maybe electromagnetism these topics are so fundamental and it's really important to get that base knowledge right so make sure that you fully understand all of these topics especially things such as gravitation and circular motion because deep understanding of those subjects rather than just finding an equation and plugging in the numbers will really help you get the top grades in the exam in the meantime if you're applying to Oxbridge you need to also ensure that you have solved all the available past papers for exams such as the ESAT or the PAD for Oxford if you run out of problems some of the old Old Anger Cambridge uh, exam problems are really really good some of them in section 2 in particular can be a lot harder than what's required but they're still absolutely excellent practice I also recommend taking part in the B4 British Physics Olympiad round 0 which is right between those two exams straight after that it will be time to really lock in and start preparing for your first set of mocks please take those seriously this is not only a test but it's a great way to see how you would cope in the exact situation looking at papers that you've never seen before. The best way to prepare for the mocks would be to number one see exactly which modules and topics are examinable and then number one maybe potentially make some notes and make sure that you've really understood the actual theory behind it and there will be time to solve all of the past papers available. Also rather than just question packs if you've covered some entire modules I would potentially start looking at some entire papers. If you've covered say the whole of paper one material, starting to solve those paper ones from previous years in time conditions will be invaluable practice. The earlier you can start that, the better. Also be really critical with the actual masking. Ask yourself, how exactly could I have worded this better? How exactly could I have written a little bit less but still scored exactly the same mark? Was my working out a little bit messy? This way you'll be working on your exam technique, which is incredibly important. After taking a nice break of the holidays from January to March this is the time to actually finish the A level specification even if your score is perhaps a little bit behind or you might be working on practical work I really recommend looking at the rest of the specification even independently in the background using textbooks maybe my revision playlist to go over the theory and then solving some of these problems the earlier you can finish the specification and be ready to start the past paper question practice the better. Around that time as well you will likely have mock number two depending on how your school structure things and it's uh, also a great opportunity to be revising the modules using the exact same process you did for your mock number one. 
Also make sure to really scrutinize those marks after you have received them. Be really honest with yourself. Was the grade a genuine reflection of what you could have done? Could you have done a little bit better? Could you have revised better, for instance? Could your exam technique have been better? Remember, mocks are mocks. So if you're not happy with the grade, feel free to not completely ignore it, but also realize that you can work much harder. And if you had to do mistakes, doing them on the mock is much better, obviously, than doing them on the real thing. I've seen multiple times students do not really well on the mocks, but then really lock in over those months and really change their grade. You can do it. From April until the end of exams, this is the time to lock in and solve every single past paper question available. One of the most common mistakes that I see is students ignoring paper three until it's time to take paper three. In other words, you're between paper two and paper three. Don't do that. One way of potentially doing that might be to solve all of the paper three questions available first. They're often on a wide range of topics. So by doing that, you will be revising a lot of the paper one and paper two material, even if it's within experiments. Then you can move on to paper two, let's say at some point in sort of mid-April, solve all of them available, and then move on to paper one with your paper one final revision finishing maybe a week or two right before the real paper one, so your knowledge is really, really up to date. A really crucial strategy would be that every single question that you get wrong, you can put that into a separate folder, be it a digital folder or an, an actual folder that you can take out and look at all the problems that you didn't get right and then ensure that you can get them correct before the actual exam. Pay particular attention on any mistake with, any mistakes with definitions or wordings of the actual questions, things that can be really easy wins should those actually come up. If you have solved all the past papers from your exam board, and a lot of you guys will have reached that stage, I also really recommend looking at other exam boards' problems on similar topics. Things such as electricity, circular motion, mechanics, forces, they're the same no matter what the exam board. Physics is the same. The only topics that I would recommend perhaps sticking to your own exam board are just really, really specific stuff such as, let's say, astrophysics and AQA, all of the options, or particularly medical physics in OCR, for instance, and AQA as well. All of those really, really specific topics, make sure to just stick to your exam board. I think also waves as well can be quite specific between different exam boards as well, but some of those questions as well can be useful. This will allow you that really important insight on tackling questions that you've not seen before. The thing though is that even if you do all of this, examiner supports every year report that students tend to do exactly the same mistakes. You need to ensure that you don't do them and I've covered all of those in a separate video that you absolutely need to watch to ensure that you don't do these mistakes. This is the video right over here, click.